Hey guys, this is your host Eric. Today we are going to watch action genre movie called Unknown. Spoilers ahead, turn on your subtitle, I greatly appreciate your support. Enjoy the video. Dr. Martin Harris and his wife Liz are on a plane. They arrive in Berlin for an outdoor conference. They get into a taxi, but Martin leaves his briefcase on a trolley behind. After he has lunch with Professor Bressler, they plan to go to an exhibition on Saturday. Martin notices his briefcase is missing as they arrive at the hotel. Liz inquires about the availability of their room and is informed that it may not be available. She becomes enraged when she notices Martin getting back into the taxi. He loses service on his phone and is stuck in traffic. He requests that the taxi driver take a different route, but on the way, they are involved in an accident and the car crashes off a bridge. Martin has been knocked out. The driver smashes a window and throws him out of the car. When the paramedics arrive, they are able to save his life. As the driver drives away, Martin awakens in a hospital bed, having been in a coma for four years. He is perplexed as to why his wife is not present, but the doctor informs him that he lacked identification. A nurse later informs him that no one has been looking for him. His belongings are returned, and he recalls receiving an engraved watch as a gift from his wife on their honeymoon. He opens a book with a dedication from his father, as well as some numbers written inside the cover on the television. There's a report about the conference, and he recalls that he was supposed to go. The doctor is reluctant to release him, but provides him with his contact information in case there are any complications. Martin goes to the hotel and informs them that he has lost his room. He, he notices his wife and attempts to follow her. The hotel security will not let him in because he lacks identification. He's escorted to Liz, but she claims she doesn't know who he is. Instead, she introduces a man who introduces himself as Dr. Martin Harris. Martin is taken from the room and shown the security cameras from their check-in. Liz checked in during the morning, and the other Martin checked in at 3 o'clock. They cannot confirm his identity. He demands to speak with his embassy, but because it is Thanksgiving and the embassy is closed, he requests to be taken back to the hospital and seen by a doctor. He is placed in a taxi, but he quickly exits and observes Liz eating through the window. He goes to a cheap hotel, but they won't let him stay because he doesn't have his passport. He goes outside to call his friend Rodney and inform him that he is in trouble. As he puts down the phone, he notices a car following him and drives into the... He is being pursued and escapes by train. He begins to jot down the appointments that he can recall. He gets off the train and tears a phone book page. Suddenly, he notices a taxi similar to the one in which he was involved in the accident and decides to go to the office. He inquires about the driver and discovers her working in a bar. Gina is her name, but she tells him to leave her alone. He arrives for his appointment with Professor Bressler only to discover that the other Martin has already arrived. Martin tries to persuade the professor of his sincerity, but both Martins say the same things. Martin, the other, displays his ID, which includes a photograph of him with Liz. Martin collapses in the hospital. Martin is given a phone number for a friend who is an investigator by the nurse. The doctor expresses regret for allowing him to leave early. Martin wonders how he knows so much about Martin Harris when he isn't him. Martin is sedated and then taken for an MRI scan. The subway man enters and attempts to take him. The nurse tries to stop him, but she is unsuccessful. Martin manages to free himself and flees in an ambulance after the man exits the room. He tries to call Liz when he gets out, but the other Martin answers. Instead, he goes to meet Jurgen, the investigator recommended by the nurse, and asks the man to assist him in proving that he is the real Martin. Harris Martin shows him his father's book, which contains the numbers. He informs Jurgen that the numbers were written by his wife. He also shows him the week's schedule, which he wrote from memory. Martin believes that this has been planned for months. There must be something they have overlooked. Jurgen promises to do his best to assist, and Martin gives him all of his money. He tells him to double-check with the taxi driver. Martin goes to see Gina and tells her that he knows she fled the accident because she is an illegal worker. He hands her his watch and instructs her to meet with Jurgen elsewhere. Jurgen approaches a man named Hans at the airport and requests a favor. Martin informs Gina of the situation, and she provides him with a place to sleep. Hans looks for information on the attendees of a video of an assassination attempt on an Arab prince named Shada is linked. Martin examines some of Gina's drawings. She is enraged that he is staring at them without her permission. She tells him that she's saving money so that she can get her papers and get out of there. A man knocks on the door and hands her the keys to a taxi. Martin is in the shower when another knock comes on the door. Two armed men barge in and knock Gina out. They search for Martin, but he has climbed onto the roof. One of the men follows him out and descends too. The other man is the subway man who is waiting with Gina. Martin returns and fights him until Gina uses a syringe to stab him in the neck. They leave in the taxi, but almost collide with the other villain's car. He pursues them through the streets, attempting to force them into the path of an approaching tram. Both cars eventually collide, and they seek refuge inside a club. 
Gina tells him that men like them murdered her family and that she is now resentful of her involvement. Martin opens his book and looks at the numbers as she walks away. He realizes it's a code indicating specific words on pages. He begins to crack the code in the book. When Gina reappears, he apologizes for causing her problems and promises to make things right. He informs Jurgen that he has cracked the code. They don't know what it means because it is the scientific name of two common flowering plants. Jurgen inquires about Prince Shada's relationship with Professor Bressler, and it appears that they are collaborating on progressive plans to solve the world's problems. He suspects that someone is impersonating Martin Harris in order to get close to the prince and assassinate him. Martin decides to find Liz on his own time. Gina believes that this is a bad idea. As planned, he follows Liz into the exhibition, but he notices that the other villain is also following her. Gina attempts to message him, informing him that the other Martin is on his way. Martin is able to spend some time alone with Liz, but she questions why he is following her. She informs him that she is unable to leave. They will both be killed. She tells him to find his briefcase before kissing him and telling him she loves him as he walks away. He is accompanied to the airport by Gina. Meanwhile, Jurgen receives a letter from Hans containing Martin and Liz's airport security photographs. He and Martin receive a phone call from Martin's friend Rodney, who says he can prove his identity. He tells him he'll be right over when he gets there. Jurgen realizes Rodney is a former mercenary sent to kill him. He is poisoned and dies before Rodney can apprehend him. Martin goes to the airport to retrieve his briefcase. It holds his passport and other documents. Gina claims that staying here is dangerous, but Martin insists that Liz told him to wait. Gina stands up to leave, and he thanks her with money. She is concerned that Liz may have revealed his location, so she returns the watch to him before leaving. Suddenly, Rodney appears and states that he has come to assist. Gina is waiting for a taxi when she notices Martin being kidnapped. She robs a taxi and gives it to Chase. Martin is being dragged from the van. Rodney explains that nothing like this has ever happened before. Martin is convinced he is Martin Harris, but Martin Harris does not exist. He was made up as a ruse to gain entry to the conference. Martin's memories are false. Martin is threatened with a gun by the villain, who demands to know who he is. Rodney describes himself as a trained assassin. The bad guy is about to shoot him. When Gina arrives and rams the villain into the van, the van collapses, killing both the villain and Rodney. Martin opens Rodney's suitcase and discovers a slew of forged passports for both him and Liz. Further investigation revealed that he was in Berlin three months ago. Martin informs Gina that the prince will be assassinated tonight and that Gina should have simply let him drown that night. Professor Bressler and his young daughters arrive at the conference after the prince. Liz greets the prince at the party. Meanwhile, Martin and Gina enter the building via the service entrance, but are apprehended by hotel security. The professor hands over his laptop to Liz who plants a device to download his hard drive. Martin's father provides Liz with the code. Martin and Gina are apprehended by security, and Martin tells them that he planted a bomb in the room three months ago. Liz will arm the bomb once the files have been downloaded. The professor is nervous, so he goes to get his laptop. Liz returns it to him before she and the other Martin leave the party. Security has been reviewing camera footage from three months ago, and when they see Martin and Liz, they decide to evacuate. As Martin and Liz descend the stairs, Liz decides to return to deal with the bomb because she does not want her face to be associated with a bomb that is no longer required. Martin notices Breslow's daughters and realizes that their names correspond to the common names of the plants he used as passwords. Martin realizes that if his research is accessed, it could be worth billions in the wrong hands and concludes that Bressler, not the prince, is the target. Martin flees the security office and confronts the other Martin, who has returned to kill Bress. Liz is caught in the explosion after failing to defuse the bomb in time. Martin begins to recall more details about the plan and his role in it. He kills the other Martin using a shard of broken mirror. Gina steps forward and takes the weapon from his grasp, then assists him in exiting the building. As the firefighters put out the fire the next day, Bressler announces the development of a new strain of corn that will go a long way toward solving the world's problems. Martin provides Gina with a forged passport, allowing her to do whatever she wants. He has a new identity as well, and they board a train to begin their new lives. We really appreciate you watching. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel with the notification bell because it is really important for us. Thank you.